My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Jesus, today we hear this story early in the account of St. Mark of the encounter with the Pharisees in the grain field, in the wheat field. And when we hear these stories, and sometimes we hear them out of context, we can be imposing a lot of the other knowledge we have of the gospel onto them. In reality, the the beginning here of Mark's gospel, the Pharisees aren't quite the, the enemies yet. And so when we hear about this question in this discussion, when we read it, and Jesus, when we come to talk to you about it, we should really consider that this is early in the story and that this may not be as hostile of a discussion as it would be in the months and the years to come. So we hear that one Sabbath, he was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, the disciples began to pluck the heads of grain. And now this this idea of plucking the heads of grain on the Sabbath is that they would they would take the grain, they'd break it up in their hands, and then they would eat the the fruit there, which would be uh, sweet, delicious. And they're just kind of doing that as they're walking through the field, maybe even subconsciously. And the Pharisees were saying to him, look, why are they doing what's not lawful on the Sabbath? And so as we picture the scene, we see ourselves maybe there watching the dialogue. It seems like the Pharisees are talking to Jesus and they're pointing to the apostles uh, who are in the making their way through this grain field. Maybe not even along a path, but they're going for a walk. So uh, the Pharisees that are there are are walking to talk to Jesus, and maybe they were asking questions, were involved in some kind of a religious discussion. Again, this isn't necessarily adversarial yet. And so, Jesus, you're you're talking to whoever whoever these Pharisees were, and they're not all bad guys. Uh, and so you're you're discussing with them, and they're asking you this question, kind of pointing to the disciples, saying, why Why are they doing that? Why are they doing what they're not allowed to do? They're not allowed to do that. And Jesus debates with them, but he does it in a way that they can understand. This is like one uh, rabbi debating with another. And so when Jesus preaches to the crowds, for example, he uses kind of the tone for the crowds and the parables for the people. But here with the Pharisees, he points to scripture. Jesus, you point to scripture. You know how to talk to each person in the way that they can understand. And that's something we should learn from you, that we have to know how to talk to each person in a way that they can understand, that we accommodate ourselves to the other, that we try to speak their language, and that when it comes to the work of apostolate and evangelization, it's not just one size fits all. We need to learn this deep, charitable approach of what's best for you. How can I best spread the gospel for the person that I'm talking to? And Jesus, that's that's what you do. We learn that from you. And so you quote scripture for them. He said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need and hungry, he and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God at the time of Abithar, the high priest, and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and also gave it to those who were with him? So he points out an example where David uh, eats this, this bread of the presence when he's fleeing from Saul and that he um, it's totally lawful for him to do it. It's um, 
because God's law is bigger. The, the needs there are, are much bigger. And so, Jesus, you teach us that God's plan is so much bigger than sometimes our, our rules and what are you allowed to do. The permission that God gives us, uh, that you give us, Lord, as God, is so much bigger than sometimes some of our rules. And this makes us free. Jesus, we're, we're set free when we live this freedom of the children of God. And it's a freedom that we have in how we live the faith. We have to keep God's law. We have to keep the moral law. We have to live in a moral and upright way. But with some of the, the customs of how we do things and some of the elements, particularly of apostolate, Lord, you've set us free. And so we believe that each one of us who are baptized and confirmed on account of those sacraments that we are empowered and we are allowed to spread the gospel, that no one can say that you're not allowed to tell someone about Jesus. Only professional Catholics are allowed to tell people about Jesus. No. The office of preaching and teaching is rightly entrusted to the apostles and those who cooperate in their ministry. But the personal apostolate of every Christian sharing the gospel of Jesus is something that each one of us is allowed to do. That we There's nothing that should stop us from telling our friends about Jesus, from inviting them to, to read scripture with us, start a Bible study maybe, and just learn and encounter and Jesus, we just want to come to know you. We're totally allowed. It's a situation that a parish priest may face. I've faced it myself as a parish priest. It's sometimes very funny when you come into a new parish that there's certain things that are not allowed and it's against the rules. And no one knows who made these rules. <laughs> So I remember one time wanting to turn on a few more lights in the church. It was a dark day and with some of the stained glass windows and the cloudy sky, the church was kind of dark. And so I just wanted to go turn on some more lights. And someone who had been working for the church for a long time and was very dedicated and faithful said, oh, no, no, no Father, you can't do that. I said, well, what do you mean? I, I just want to turn on some lights. It's... It's dark in the church. No, no, no. You're not allowed to do that. We only turn on certain lights during the day and other lights, you know, only for big occasions. And so you're not allowed. It's against the rules. And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm the parish priest. Did the bishop make this rule? Did something, you know? But we get our into these mindsets of we're only allowed to do certain things. And certain things are against the rules. And if we break those rules... We're going to get in trouble. And that, while it may be a built-up custom in certain ways, that's not the freedom, the full freedom that Jesus calls us to, that he empowers us. And if we have that thought with our gospel, no, no, you can't, you can't spread the gospel. Leave it to a professional to talk to someone about Jesus. You, as a member of the lay faithful, you're just meant to direct people to the priest. And that you shouldn't spread the gospel. Absolutely not. You're totally allowed. I'm totally allowed. We are allowed. We're encouraged to spread the gospel. We have that permission. And we're not going to get in trouble. And as we do it, modeling ourselves after Jesus, we do it in the language that each person can understand. That's the new evangelization. That each one of us, in the language that we speak, the same language as our coworkers, as our family members, our friends, that we can accommodate ourselves to how they can understand. Jesus, the way you spoke to the Pharisees on their terms and in their ways, so we, as we spread the gospel in the way that we are allowed, permitted, encouraged to do, we can spread your gospel of Jesus, your good news, to all those in our life who need to come to know you. We ask our mother mother of the new evangelization to pray for us in this uh, so that we can be real faithful messengers of her son. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations which you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help in putting them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, 
St. Joseph, my father and lord, my guardian angel, intercede. 